the, uh, the next speaker, we're, we're going to do this a little slowly, so walk slowly because if people are rushing to get here right at 9 o'clock. <laughs> so next speaker is Mauro Giacca from Trieste, is uh, the Center, the Center for, International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. I can never remember what those initials stand for. And he is going to be talking about <clears throat> small RNAs for cardiac gene editing and regeneration. Thank you very much. So I, I can... Uh, I have four additional minutes for <laughs> the previous talk, I see. <laughs> no. <laughs> 8, 8.59, no, according to my watch, yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much to the, the organizer for, for having me here. It's really a pleasure. I mean, uh, I, I look forward to next uh, uh, occasion of the ACGT annual meeting to have uh, the room of cardiovascular gene therapy with plenty of people. And uh, we... we really work for that. So basically, the, the, the work I'm going to present uh, uh, today uh, is based on two principles that uh, are very strong in uh, what we do in the laboratory. The first uh, is that uh, microRNAs uh, uh, are not only essential components of basically any biological process, but uh, they are also fantastic tools uh, that can be used exogenously to change uh, the behavior, uh, biological behavior of a, of a cell. Each microRNA targets tens or hundreds of genes, and so they are uh, uh, perfect instruments uh, to uh, basically modify the complex uh, um, uh, activity of the cells, which cannot be accomplished by single uh, uh, gene uh, transfer or uh, uh, gene knockout or uh, knockdown. And uh, uh, they're also very interesting uh, for this purpose because uh, they are small molecules, 21, 22 nucleotides double-stranded, which are easily to deliver, both in the context of uh, viral vectors as uh, uh, precursor RNAs or as naked uh, mimics. And, uh, and these mimics can also be, uh, to a certain extent, modified chemically to prolong their effect. I will show you uh, this uh, a bit later in the talk. The second concept uh, is that uh, if you really want uh, to uh, achieve uh, a, a molecule that changes uh, uh, for true a biological factor, you have uh, different options. So suppose you are searching for a microRNA that uh, performs a certain function. So one possibility is that you study individual microRNAs because uh, you are a fan of uh, biochemistry approaches, uh, and so you study the, the, the gene that they target and their uh, interactions and, and their relevance in biology, so on and so forth, then you pick up one and test the function, hoping that uh, this microRNA will be the right one. The same concept applies also to proteins. A second kind of approach is what I call the photographic approach. It's similar to, to, to what Thierry has shown you, that is, you make a very careful analysis uh, of what uh, is occurring during uh, normal biology, and then you pick up out uh, of these uh, omics studies. Uh, uh, the molecule that uh, uh, can be potentially useful to uh, change a biological, biological behavior. Uh, the third approach, however, is uh, to me much more appealing, and this is an approach based on unbiased screenings. So basically you don't have any uh, a priori concept uh, on what you could find, but you simply go for a fishing expeditions uh, analyzing thousands of molecules and searching the one that gives you the behavior that uh, you want. If you think uh, in biology this uh, has uh, led to fantastic uh, uh, discoveries. Uh, this is uh, a plate uh, from uh, the early from the, the early 80s uh, um, concerning the discovery of oncogenes. This is a paper from Stu Aronson uh, and uh, um, Barbacid in which uh, uh, oncogenes were discovered plating the 33 cells and transfecting into this, in these cells uh, cDNA libraries from tumors and finding the genes that were transformed in the fibroblast. I've been working for more than 20 years on HIV and the HIV core receptor, the chemokine receptor, was uh, uh, known early in the studies in, in, uh, in the in early 80s, but it took 15 years because before it was discovered. It was discovered by taking HeLa CD4 cells and transfecting this with the library of lymphocytes and searching for the cDNA, which was the cDNA for 6S4, that permitted these cells to become permissive to HIV. Several of the drugs that we use come from large screenings. Uh, Yamanaka factors were found out of 21 different lentiviral vectors and uh, searching uh, uh, randomly the combination that gave the four factors that we use now. So screenings uh, as a fundamental uh, 
uh, uh, uh, pathway to find uh, new uh, functions. And so what I want to do in, uh, in, uh, in this talk is to show you two stories, that both of which uh, starting from screenings. And the first story uh, concerns uh, the uh, identification of microRNAs that uh, enhance uh, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, mediated homology uh, directed repair, so homology recombination. So microRNAs that drive the cells towards homology recombination. And the second story is a follow-up of a previous uh, hydroplus screening that we did a few years ago to search for microRNAs that promote cardiac regeneration. All our screenings are performed by high content microscopy. So basically, for example, these are uh, cardiomyces stained in green, nuclei in blue, proliferating cells in uh, uh, um, red, and then the picture is taken up by high quantum microscope transformed in a computer generated image where you can play with uh, um, asking information for uh, size, uh, different colors, uh, morphology, and uh, uh, all these kind of parameters. First talk, I mean, let's say uh, that we want microRNAs that uh, promote homologous recombination. There is no need in this audience to say how much of this would be needed for Mendelian disorders. So if you want to think of homologous recombination in uh, a tissue, then you need a, a vector that might deliver the gene editing tools, in our case to the heart. You need a tool that uh, induces double-stranded DNA breaks in correspondence of the mutation you want to correct. And then uh, you need uh, to convince the cells, cardiomyocytes in our case, to uh, uh, direct repair through homologous recombination. We are doing very well with gene editing tools because AV vectors, as we know in this audience, uh, they target uh, uh, cardiomyocytes very well. And we, know very, we do very well also with uh, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 and uh, all the evolution of the system. However, CRISPR-Cas9 basically are excellent in uh, inducing double-stranded DNA breaks, but then uh, basically these are systems that leave the cells to decide whether to repair these breaks through non-homologous enjoining, which is uh, uh, good to induce mutations, or to homologous recombination, which is also, uh, would also be necessary to induce uh, uh, correction. And this part of the pathway is uh, uh, already reasonably well exploited. Uh, this is just a paper that, uh, to which we contributed from the Olson Laboratory, and there are many other examples uh, in the literature similar to this in which you can very simply um, uh, um, transduce the heart with uh, uh, um, components on CRISPR-Cas9 and uh, uh, target uh, uh, Cas9 to cleave in correspondence also to specific cardiac genes to induce mutation of uh, these genes. What is much more difficult is uh, to uh, uh, stimulate uh, homologous directed repair because this requires uh, cells to undergo a pathway which is normally suppressed in post-mitotic uh, tissues. So homologous recombination physiologically occurs during the S phase but uh, uh, the post-mitotic cells like cardiomyces or neurons or retina and other cell types, most cell types in the body, are resting cells that are not in essence. So almost recombination is impaired. So the question for us was, uh, can we, uh, are there, do, do microRNA exist uh, that target uh, uh, the, the trigger the homologous recombination in the cells. And so we started the screening by using uh, um, three plasmids. One plasmid uh, uh, encodes for a mutated version of GFP, so this is black, the mutated version. And then another plasmid uh, is a template for correction that converts this uh, into green if there is homologous recombination. And then we have uh, the components of uh, CRISPR-Cas9, so the Cas9 protein uh, uh, f uh, from Cephalococcus pyogenes and a guide RNA that drives this uh, uh, onto the mutation. And uh, uh, all three components uh, are necessary to be present to have homologous uh, uh, recombination. This is a, a test system in which we, if we omit any of the components, uh, basically the cells uh, uh, don't become uh, green. And then we screened all uh, 2,042 human microRNAs uh, from a Darmacon uh, library in 384 well plates by screening for uh, cells that uh, uh, become uh, uh, um, a green uh, due to homologous recombination and have been uh, transduced because with an antibody we also detect both the uh, recombined protein and the wild type uh, protein. So basically we stain for total EGFP, mutated or non-mutated, and for recombined GFP. 
These are the results of the screening where you see one. It means uh, uh, that basically there was no, no effect. Uh, each uh, uh, this line is composed by 2,042 dots. You see that uh, uh, there are a number of microRNAs that increase homologous uh, uh, directly repair in this uh, uh, system, uh, 21 above the uh, statistical threshold of more than 2.5-fold. You see that many of these are in excess of a tenfold increase of homologous recombination. This is just a, a glimpse on the, uh, the screening. So basically, the cells that are transduced are red. The cells that are, uh, have GFP repaired by homologous recombination are green. These are uh, uh, controlled. These are single wells of 384 wells. So this is a composite mosaic. And you see treatment with the two uh, control microRNAs, and with one microRNA, that significantly increase homologous recombination. This is a, a microRNA we we'll speak later that uh, promotes uh, cardiomyocyte proliferation, but you see that uh, proliferation. These are U2OS cells, uh, and in many cases, this microRNA is totally inactive here. The funny thing is that uh, out of uh, 21 microRNAs that were statistically enriched in this screening, 10 were belonging to only two clusters, and these are the clusters uh, that uh, um, uh, define the family of the microRNA 420, microRNA uh, 302. And you see that, uh, uh, which are in green and, and in blue here, the other microRNAs are in black. You see that uh, they are very powerful in driving almost direct repair. Even the more funny thing was that uh, both uh, 502 420 and uh, uh, 302 share exactly the same seed sequence. So basically through the screening we selected out of 21 microRNA 10 that have exactly the same sequence, seed sequence which is uh, uh, shown here. These microRNAs are very well known in, in uh, the literature because they are essential to maintain the embryonic stem cell phenotype. So they hardly express in embryonic stem cells. And if you inhibit them by GAPMERS, basically, stem cells can maintain their stem cell phenotype and they start to differentiate. One of the most powerful microRNA that, uh, the most powerful that don't belong to, don't share the seed sequence is this microRNA here, which is one of the newest for 469. You can judge this from the high number and I will show results on this uh, as well uh, later. Uh, the screening was performed by transient transfection of plasmids, but this microRNA work was also on integrated templates, and uh, so basically we obtained a report as a line in which the template was integrated into the AVS1 uh, locus, the, the neutral AVS1 locus, and then tested the microRNA. You see that all microRNAs are active in uh, driving recombination also on uh, a, a chromatinized template in the chromosomes. And uh, this is the effect on the cell cycle of uh, uh, these uh, microRNAs. You see that uh, all members of the family of the uh, um, uh, 520 and 302 push cells into G2M. And we believe that this is the reason why these microRNAs are so effective in driving homologous recombination. Embryonic stem cells spend a lot of time in G2. Uh, M. This is probably a consequence also of the expression of these microRNAs. Recombination occur during SG2M, and so this is probably uh, the reason why these cells are more prone to more recombination uh, compared to other cells, and uh, evidently these microRNAs are part of the, of the story. More interesting was uh, 4469 because, uh, because it doesn't have this effect. Uh, and uh, <coughs> and uh, exerts this uh, capacity of driving homologous recombination in uh, uh, probably a different manner. These are the experiments in which uh, uh, we tested the microRNAs uh, to see what was the relationship in the induction of uh, a protein in checkpoints uh, and proteins in homologous recombination. And you see that uh, uh, basically uh, the uh, prototype for uh, 302 and 420, which are here in red, they all uh, uh, induce proteins uh, in the homologous recombination pathway, including uh, MR11, uh, RAD50, uh, and uh, uh, MBS1. These are the components of the uh, uh, complex that uh, recognizes uh, double-stranded DNA uh, damage and drives repair through homologous recombination. However, they do so in the absence of eliciting uh, uh, cell cycle checkpoints, also in the absence of uh, 
uh, inducing a DNA damage phenotype. So there is an absence of phosphorylated check 2 absence of gamma-2 uh, uh, AEX. So basically, probably they target these proteins, uh, they increase their levels without inducing DNA damage. Not only they don't induce DNA damage, but they suppress uh, the markers of DNA uh, damage. These are said to have been treated with hydrosuria. And here we see by immunofluorescence uh, the uh, cell that expressed foci of gamma-2 AX, which is a known marker of DNA damage. You see the scene increase in this uh, after uh, hydrosuria treatment. If you treat the cell with all three microRNAs, basically you suppress gamma-2 AX foci. And the interpretation we give to this is that this microRNA push repair through a modular recombination, and so they remove DNA damage, and so gamma-2 AX foci uh, do not uh, uh, accumulate. This is a quantification and magnification. You see these are nuclei with gamma-2 AX foci which disappear. This is uh, shown, shown here is for 469. You see that uh, basically the effect is really uh, uh, remarkable. <coughs> Obviously, we want to know the mechanism uh, for this. And, uh, and, and this is still work in progress. What we know that if you do RNA-seq between the uh, RNAs that are uh, modified, the, the, the cellular messenger RNA that are modified after transfection, of 120 on, or 302 or 4469, these are completely different. So basically the changes in the transcriptome after 520 and 302 basically are largely overlapping. However, the genes that are differentially regulated by 302 and 4469 or 520 and 4469 are largely different. There is only uh, less than 13% of uh, identity in these uh, genes. <coughs> and if you look at the genes that are regulated by 4469, there is a strong enrichment for genes uh, that are in the BRCA1, BRCA2 uh, pathways and uh, RAD50. So these are all genes that are uh, expressed more than twofold. Uh, they are more than twofold upregulated if you treat cells with 4469. Uh, if you do uh, pathway analysis, basically what is uh, highlighted after 4469 is that you have a strong activation of all the cluster of genes that are centered around BRCA1 and uh, uh, BRCA2, which are the, this exact mechanism that by which 4469 target this pathway, we still, uh, we still uh, don't know. And we are working on that. We know, that, however, that we can uh, transfer these uh, microRNAs in terms of effect also to uh, primary cardiomyocytes. These are primary cardiomyocytes which are uh, transduced with the AV vector uh, counterparts of the plasmids that we, for which we, we perform the screening. So basically we use a combination of four plasmids, one uh, for the mutated uh, GFP, one for the template, one for Cas9, and one for uh, the guide, the multiplicity of the infection allows all the plasmid to enter into the same cell with the AV6 uh, capsid. And uh, you see here um, representative images and quantification showing that uh, all the uh, microRNAs, uh, so um, um, both the uh, 302 and 520 family members, but in particular 4469, are very active in driving homologous recombination in primary. Uh, cardiomyces, we have uh, with 4469 more than 10 percent of cells that uh, are, uh, have homologous recombination. And uh, this is uh, just the last picture on this part of the talk. You see beautiful cardiomyces uh, in which GFP has been uh, uh, recombined and uh, repaired. And now we are moving this uh, uh, system towards uh, in vivo uh, application directly in the heart. Good. The second part uh, of my presentation concerns another microRNA, uh, which uh, is a microRNA on, on which we have been uh, working uh, over the last uh, six years or so. And, uh, and because uh, uh, we selected it originally uh, with the purpose of finding microRNAs that, that drive, uh, omol uh, that drive sorry, uh, cardiac uh, uh, regeneration, uh, I mean, uh, Michelle and Thierry have already introduced the problem of uh, uh, cardiac regeneration. And uh, basically, every myocardial infarct, there are uh, uh, billions of cardiomyocytes which are lost and that uh, need to be replaced. And you know that uh, over the years, there have been uh, different attempts at uh, replacing these uh, uh, cardiomyocytes. Uh, all experimentations using, uh, uh, say, adult stem cells of various derivations, so bone marrow, hematopoietic stem cells, mesenchymal cells, cardiosphere, adult. Uh, 
uh, cardiac stem cells have all the, uh, failed, to be fair. Uh, uh, the possibility obviously exists to generate cardiomyocytes from embryonic stem cells, as Michel showed in his presentation, or to uh, induce fibroblasts to tantally differentiate into cardiomyocytes, but uh, you also appreciate the difficulty of these problems and all the side effects that are uh, correlated to this uh, kind of approach. And uh, uh, therefore, an alternative strategy would be to mimic what spontaneously happen in zebrafish or in, in, in salamander, by which, or in the neonatal heart, by which uh, cardiac regeneration occurs uh, through the proliferation of uh, already existing uh, cardiomyocytes. So the question here uh, for us was a very obvious, can we find microRNA that stimulate endogenous capacity of cardiomyocytes to proliferate? So, so we ran a screening a few years ago. At the time, the library that we screened uh, was uh, less complex than the one, uh, the one we have now, so it's uh, a bit less than 1,000 microRNAs. We screened for proliferation of neonatal cardiomyocytes. At the end of the story, we, find, we found 40 microRNAs that uh, drive proliferation of uh, neonatal rat, mouse, and human uh, cardiomyocytes. And uh, we constructed AV vectors by which uh, uh, we injected with AV vectors infarcted mice hearts, and, and these vectors expressing microRNA 590-199A had the capacity to convert these big uh, scars into very small scars through uh, regeneration of the myocardium. So, so far so good, and then in these years we learned a lot about these microRNAs. We know the mechanism of action, how they work. We shortlisted these 40 microRNAs into six that are very active in human embryonic stem cells derived uh, cardiomyocytes. We eliminated some because they were not active in humans. For example, 590 is very good, the best in mouse, but doesn't work in humans. While we concentrated our attention in, on 199A because uh, this is a microRNA that's completely conserved in all species uh, for which uh, uh, there is a, a record in uh, mere base. And so with this microRNA, we proceeded uh, to large uh, animal studies. The reason why you need pig studies uh, before thinking of any therapy uh, is, uh, is uh, 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 very obvious, has been summarized very well in, uh, in uh, Michel's talks uh, 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 before. So the experiment that we did was uh, to obtain uh, uh, an AV6 uh, vector. So we found that AV6 is the best in the porcine heart. AV6 vector expressing uh, the precursor for microRNA 199A, so the same gene that was so active in, uh, in pigs. And the experiment were performed uh, in uh, farm pigs, uh, occlusion of the first diagonal branch of the uh, left, uh, um, uh, uh, the left descending coronary artery for 90 minutes, followed by reperfusion, so ischemia reperfusion, and then we injected the AV vectors in 10 sites uh, around uh, the border zone after uh, reperfusion. The viral vector DNA persists there. We know that the AV vectors also in peaks persist for a month or even year-long uh, periods. The uh, animals were analyzed two days and 28 days by magnetic resonance Im uh, imaging with uh, gadolinium uh, enhancement, uh, and uh, the results were truly spectacular. Never seen uh, such results by any clinician that uh, analyzed this data. Uh, basically, ejection fraction uh, was uh, similar in the two groups, uh, controlled and treated, uh, two days uh, after uh, infarction. And then they dropped down in the uh, control, so heart failure in the pig model, after one month, while the remain uh, uh, stable or even increased in the uh, AV microRNA 109 treated pigs to levels that were indistinguishable with the non-infarcted animals. Same result for stroke volume and uh, the systolic and diastolic uh, left ventricle uh, volumes. Infar uh, uh, mass was uh, uh, also very significantly decreased in the animals treated with 199A and infarct size was uh, uh, equally decreased. After one month, the animals uh, uh, with the control showed high levels of uh, fibrosis in the heart, which was uh, very significantly reduced in the animals uh, uh, treated with 199A. Uh, These are just some pictures uh, uh, to convince you. Uh, this is the uh, same animal seen at week one, week four, and week eight. This is the apex of the heart. This is the base of the heart. 
and uh, this is late gadolinium enhancement, and in red, the, uh, in fact, the region is counter-stained, so if you look at these uh, two central images, you see that there is a huge infarct uh, one week of the septum and uh, the anterior wall, and that uh, this large infarct uh, progressively becomes a large scar at week eight. This is an animal that was injected with 199A. You see similarly uh, um, a big infarct, the same region week one, but you see that progressively this uh, big infarct uh, uh, resolves in, in some, some uh, um, slices almost completely. This is just a magnification. You see that the big infarct that progressively becomes much, much more disappears. This is just some movies to show you uh, the uh, effect of these microRNAs. Uh, this is an infarcted pig treated with a control uh, AV vector at one month. You see dilation of the left ventricle, thinning uh, of the septum, and the anterior wall is uh, immobile. And these are two animals uh, that were treated with AV vectors uh, expressing 199A. You see that there is much more uh, muscle tissue here. There is uh, more kinetic contraction and there is a motility of the anterior wall and less, uh, less thinning. So, so far so good, we were very, very excited. We made a mistake, and the mistake was to keep these animals longer than one month and see what happens. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I anticipated. Uh, just some correlate of these findings. So basically, you see in the border zone, this is 12 days, a lot of cells that uh, express uh, KI67. Uh, this is the, the infarcted region where we inject it. You see big cardiomyces that express KI67. See the, the scar here and a uh, large number of proliferating cells. These animals uh, uh, also received BRDU for 12 days, so we can see proliferation of the BRDU. You see very uh, um, um, significant increase in uh, BRDU incorporation in a passage through G2M, phosphorus 3 uh, positivity. This is just an enlargement. This is a infarcted region. Here we inject it. You see how many cardiomyces. We never saw so many cardiomyces in in, uh, in uh, um, mice. And there are several cells in the border zone where injected again in day, day 12, they show differentiation, uh, the differentiation expressing uh, a large proportion of GATA4. And some of this GATA4 is also cytoplasmic localization, which is a property of uh, embryonic development in the heart. Again, a magnification, you see the, the infarcted region and close to the infarcted region where we injected there are all these GATA4 uh, positive uh, cells. And see what happens if we wait more than one month. These are animals followed for two months and you see that between week uh, uh, five and, we, we, we and seven they almost synchronously die. So uh, 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 seven animals out of eight that were observed up to two months Basically, they died. All of them, despite having been treated at different times during the year, they died almost uh, the, during the same week, as if something has accumulated in their heart that drove their death. And most of these deaths were, at least we could uh, analyze those in three animals that had a reveal implanted, were electric death. So death due to uh, a pattern like this one. So uh, sinus pattern and then uh, uh, torsoid pans, uh, and then uh, suddenly ventricular tachycardia and uh, uh, electric death. So it is sudden death due to arrhythmic uh, uh, events. And in three animals, uh, we found something that was very remarkable, that is the presence inside the tissue of cells that were infiltrating the tissues. This is hematocylin eosin, this is with actinin. The cells are negative for actinin, so they are not uh, mature uh, cardiomyocytes. They are uh, uh, highly proliferating, so they express uh, high levels of KI67. Uh, uh, as you can see here, this uh, cluster of cells, they infiltrate uh, these uh, uh, tissues. They are negative uh, for markers uh, of uh, uh, circulating cells, so they are not inflammatory cells. They are negative for CD45. They are negative for CD34, so they are not endothelial cells. They are negative for marker of uh, uh, differentiated cardiomyocytes or muscle cells, like HHF35 or Desmin. However, they are strongly positive for GATA4, indicating a, an early muscle uh, phenotype, and from myogenin, which is again 
a protein that is expressed in uh, early myogenic uh, precursors. So to some extent, these are myoblasts that pro early myoblasts that proliferate inside the heart of uh, these uh, animals. So basically, this is a, a clear indication that uh, the, um, this microRNA is a powerful drug, but that this prolonged expression is uh, uh, not something that uh, is uh, without uh, consequences. And uh, uh, in, uh, you might want to call these uh, tumors, or you might want to call these uh, in other terms. So there is no human pathology similar to what we, we see here. But I think that this is a, a clear indication that uh, an excess of stimulus to proliferate is uh, dangerous, but uh, it's also an indication that uh, we have a powerful potential drug to drive proliferation. We only need to control it. And the best way to... Yes, I'm, I'm finished. Yeah. Uh, and the best way to control this is to deliver this drug as a synthetic molecule. Uh, if you inject in the heart uh, microRNA 199A, these are mice experiments, uh, after two days uh, you reach 200-fold uh, um, uh, compared to basal levels. So this goes down, it takes 12 days to go down, and these 12 days are sufficient to drive repair of the heart. So a single injection of 199A in mice basically almost completely, well, completely, very significantly repair big myocardial infarction, converting them into much smaller myocardial infarction with consequent functional uh, recovery. So basically, the take-home messages uh, uh, overall are that uh, uh, for the regeneration part, is that uh, cardiac regeneration can be achieved by stimulating endogenous cardiomyocardial proliferation, but that this process needs to be tightly controlled and for the uh, homologous recombination part is that uh, the, uh, there are at least two clusters, of 20 and 302, and one microRNA for 469 that are very powerful in inducing homology directed uh, repair. And the general talk is that, uh, the general message is that microRNA are really powerful tools to modulate in vivo also for therapeutic purposes, uh, biological functions. So thank you very much for your attention. Oh, sorry, I just have to acknowledge many people who participated to this work. You've seen the names of those who did most of the work. I just have to mention that uh, uh, and this is a, the peak story, is a collaboration that lasts several years with Fabio Recchia in uh, uh, Pisa, and that uh, all the work is a collaboration with Serena Zacchini, who runs her own work in, uh, in, in Trieste. All the AV vectors are produced by a fantastic facility we have been having for 15 years, which is uh, headed by uh, Lorena Zentilin, who is here, and she's really our master's. I will move my laboratory to the King's College in London starting in January next year, so if you know uh, outstanding postdocs that uh, would like to join this uh, excite and exciting part of the work and other projects we have in the laboratory, this is my, my new address and uh, looking forward to new recruitments. So thank you very much for your attention. That was great. So, so I'm, I'm the last speaker, and I, my talk is intentionally a little bit under time, so we actually do have oh, time you. for a question or two if people want to ask. Too good of you. Thank you. Yeah. Richard Lawn, a dentist. That was uh, remarkable. And my question now gets a little more trivial given the last five minutes of your talk, because I was going to ask in the pig AAV treatment, was that systemic? Delivery of AAV, or was no, it No, it, it was heart? injected. Ten injections around the blood okay. zone, the infarct. Okay. All right. And then, of course, your final message is, is incredibly important, that kill switches or anything else to inactivate AAV-driven, whether it's cutting or, in your case, proliferation stimulus, is, is an important next step that we all have to be working on. Terrific talk. Thank you. Totally agree. Thank you very much. Michael Flam, Toronto. Really fantastic stuff. I had a question, what fraction of animals, it, it, I think the really exciting but sobering finding is that you, you, you saw had these sudden cardiac deaths. What fraction of the animals that died, did I, did I hear three had seven, the... Seven out of eight of those who were analyzed after one month. And, and what fraction of those had the, the proliferating cells? In other words, I guess what I'm asking, we, we, is, we, we, were the proliferating cells causing the arrhythmias in your mind, or are there two phenomena going on here? Arrhythmias we and... We don't know. As you know very well, the, the, the heart of a pig is too, too big for systematic analysis, which we are doing now. We, we found easily cells in three out of these seven uh, that died. Uh, but uh, we don't know whether the arrhythmia comes from the proliferation infiltration of these cells 
or comes uh, from the formation of uh, new tissue that uh, then it is mature because it contains the microRNA inside. Yeah. Could be either possibility. But the bottom line is that uh, I mean I wouldn't inject an AV vector into into a Christian. <laughs> okay, well thank you thank again. You